Wake up to a perfect sunny day in Wisconsin. Travel to the Road America Road Course. Find an entire fleet of brand new BMW M3s and M4s waiting to be driven. Given an open circuit and the freedom to drive any car to my heart's content. This is my M3 and M4 review for Bimmer Post. The first awesome thing about the new M's is that you can still get one with a manual. Even though I only got to drive it on the street, its shift feel and clutch engagement are both greatly improved from its predecessor. The new interior is also a step up with better adjustability in the seats and a deliciously chunky yet softly padded three-spoke steering wheel. M-inspired details are everywhere and I love how muscular the sedan looks. The coupe looks great as well, wide, flat and low. It looks hunkered and menacing. The styling of both M cars are exactly as I like them, full of confidence and purpose. Let's start with the M3. Like any great M car, the first thing that I notice is its engine. Unlike previous M3s, it's got a very wide power band, and instant torque right from idle. I adjusted my driving accordingly, upshifting early and riding that tidal wave all the way down the streets. Okay, we gotta talk about the brakes. These optional ceramics are incredible. Pedal travel is short, there's tons of feedback, and there is no fade, not even after many hard laps. Every lap, these brakes just egg you on to brake later. Sadly, I couldn't drive the manual on the track, but the DCT Dual Clutch Auto was a great transmission while learning Road America. It wasn't as involving as a three pedal, but it did make driving very easy because I could focus entirely on braking, steering, and my lines. Downshifts were flawless, but on the quickest setting, the upshifts did produce an occasional jolt. The new front end feels lighter, pointier, and more precise. There isn't a ton of feedback through your fingertips until you start to slide the car around. But when you do, the feedback starts to flow and the car is easy to correct. As always, BMW suspension and body control are excellent. I drove cars equipped with EDC active dampers and also cars with a base suspension. If you want to save some money on options, just stick with the base. The active dampers give you a better ride in its softer settings, but that's not necessary for me. On this circuit, in this car, I just do not want to stop driving it. On any measurable parameter, the new cars are much better than the ones they replace. But as always, the big question for me is whether we've lost something in the transition to new technology. Have we sacrificed some emotional quotient to gain better efficiency in track times? Would I still wake up early and yearn to drive the new M's the way I did my previous E90 M3? While it was less powerful and less efficient, the previous S65 V8 engine remains an all-time great. The Turbo 6 in these new cars is a completely different animal and a new experience in an M3. Once you adjust your driving style to better match its personality, it's an able and exuberant dance partner. I love the torque, the playful chassis, and the endless thrust. A few words about the nearly identical M4. The seating position is lower and more natural. I feel more comfortable in it, and its handling balance is more frisky. Get the M3 for the practicality, but the M4 for the ultimate driving experience. All the cars I drove today were equipped with the optional ceramic brakes, so I can't tell you how the conventional rotors perform. If you have any intentions to bring your M3 or M4 to the track, just get the ceramics because you won't regret it. slide around. It's very predictable and the steering just loves it. It was a truly awesome day driving the new M cars at Road America. I want to keep going but I'm out of gas. To read my complete review, head over to memorpost.com.